The 1930s were a time of economic hardship, as the Great Depression was in full swing, leading to the Union Castle Line building a class of free economical motor ships. These ships were going to help carry the Union Castle Line into the next decade. The first of these three revolutionary ships was to be called the Stirling Castle. The Stirling Castle was going to have a curved superstructure which supported one elegant funnel. She was going to be powered by double acting 10 cylinder marine two stroke diesel engines that drove one poor lonely propeller, giving her a service speed of 20 knots. Her interiors on the other hand I can't find much. But what I do know is that her massive interiors are extremely luxurious for the time and route she served on. Her keel was laid on the 1st of May 1934 and she was launched on the 15th of August 1935 by the wife of the chairman of the Union Castle Line and she was completed by the 29th of January 1936. The Stirling Castle would have a pretty solid career which started on the 7th of February 1936. She even took the record of the fastest crossing on the Southampton to South Africa route, which had been held by the SS Scott since 1893. Then in 1939 the Second World War broke out, which led to the Stirling Castle being requisitioned by the British government for wartime service, which went without event and she even transported 128,000 troops across the world. Though eventually World War II would come to an end and she was handed back to the Union Castle Line in 1945, which saw her receive a refit for passenger service. The Stirling Castle enjoyed 20 years of service after the Second World War, which all went without much event. In fact, out of the now 40 episodes of Maritime Monday, this is probably the most peaceful ship I've covered so far. But despite this, her career would come to an end in 1965, as the Stirling Castle and her sisters were deemed too slow for the route she served on, leading to the Union Castle line to sell the Stirling Castle and her sisters. Initially, she was supposed to be sold to Taiwanese shipbreakers, but this deal did an impression of the piano on the Aquitania and fell through. But this didn't mean that she was safe, not by a long shot, as instead she was sold to Japanese shipbreakers, and she departed from Southampton on the 1st of February 1966 to her shipbreakers, where she would be broken up for scrap, bringing an end to a ship with the most boring career. Hello everybody, it is I, Captain Oblivious Mist, and welcome back to the epilogue. To another epilogue? Anyways. Uh, for those of you unaware, uh, this is the this episode of Maritime Monday, the Sterling Castle, will be the beginning of a new series of videos covering Sterling Castle and her sisters. Uh, second of all, um, fun fact: that one section that I just did, the Dubai section, took me fourteen takes. Fourteen. I had one take that was immaculate, so close to being done, and then on the last line, someone decided to message me. I really should learn to mute my phone. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching everyone, and I shall hopefully see you in the next video. Goodbye.